Good evening, and welcome to the Foxborough Zoning Board of Appeals August 17, 2023 meeting. This meeting and the hearings that we will consider is being broadcast and recorded by Foxborough Cable Access. Um, first order of business is I'd like to publicly congratulate, congratulate Lorraine on being appointed a member of the board. Lorraine's been an associate member for a number of years and has had a well-deserved appointment as a regular member. So again, congratulations. Thanks, Barney. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to the uh, select board also for the appointment and Kurt for his recommendation. Okay, the time being 7 p.m., we have the continued public hearing and appeal by BLC Inc. pursuant to section 10.2.2.1 of the Code of the Town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, Chapter 275 Zoning of a zoning enforcement decision dated May 16, 2023 from the Town of Foxborough Building Commissioner slash Zoning Enforcement Officer to cease and desist storing of large quantities of loam and landscaping materials at 295R South Street, as this is not allowed under Chapter 275 Zoning, Table 3-1, Table of Uses, Use C8, Landscape slash Building Supply Yards. Property is located in the R40 Residential and Agricultural District and is not located in any restrictive overlay district. Uh, when we met back in June, uh, we continued the matter to, um, to tonight. Uh, we had initially scheduled a site walk on August 3rd, and then we were requested to postpone that to allow the applicant to hopefully clean up the property to um, Mr. Um, Mr. Shippey's um, satisfaction. And Mr. Shippey and, Mr. Sp and Attorney Spillane and the property owner did a site walk on August 2nd. And we have a memorandum from um, Mr. Shippey to the Board of Appeals with a copy to attorney Frank Spillane. It's dated August 3rd, 2023. Dear board members, at the June 29, 2023 hearing, I was requested by the board to conduct a site inspection at 295R South Street. On August 2nd, 2023, I, along with the property owner and, and attorney Spillane, walked the premise and found that the property was kept in a clean and organized state. After conversations with the owner, it is my opinion there are no existing violations on the property at this time. And that's Agreed. Yep. still- it, it looks really nice over there now. Okay. Nice, nice job. And then on August 7, 2023, um, we, I have a letter that is addressed to me and to the board members from attorney Frank Spillane uh, dear Mr. Overt and board members, the applicant BL, BLC LLC respectfully request the Foxborough Zoning Board of Appeals to withdraw without prejudice the application of case number 23-11 concerning the real property located at 295R South Street. The applicant has re resolved all issues with the Fox, Foxborough Building Commissioner slash Zoning Enforcement Officer Scott Shippey regarding his cease and desist letter dated May 16, 2023. See his memorandum to the board dated 8-3-2023 attached. Therefore, the applicant believes there are no issues to appeal and withdrawal without prejudice is in the best interest of the applicant and the board. <clears throat> Thank you for your time and consideration of this request. And I signed Francis J. Spillane. Um, I spoke with Mr. Spillane this afternoon. Um, he indicated that he has also talked with Mr. Griffin, who was the individual who first contacted, you know, Mr. Shippey relative to the matter, mm -hmm. and he's satisfied as things stand now. Yeah. Yep. So I think um, withdrawal, and we really, really don't need to do it without prejudice, because obviously if there's any uh, backsliding, it'll be a new matter, but I have no problem, you know, doing it that way. Mm -hmm. So a motion from somebody? Um, Motion to withdraw the application. For the appeal. Or, I'm sorry, the appeal by BLC, LLC. Without prejudice. Without prejudice. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Okay. One more off my desk. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't start until 710. Okay. So let's take care of a couple of administrative matters. Um, 
the minutes from June 29 and from July 20. Anybody have any questions or comments? Um, Kim sent me a couple of minor spelling corrections for the June 29th minutes. Okay. Anything with the Otherwise, they look great. Yeah. Anything with July 20? Okay. Motion to approve both sets of minutes as corrected. Second. Okay, all in favor? We have to re reorganize. Now that Lorraine is fully a member, uh, we need to re reorganize. So I'll, I'll raise the same question I raised last month. Does anybody want to be chairperson? <laughs> Ooh! No. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> uh, no, but thank you. Very kind offer. <laughs> no, thank you, Brian. No, thank you. So, somebody want to make a motion as to how to um, re reorganize? So, do we do all of the positions all, at the same time? We can do them all at the same time. Okay, so I would make a motion uh, to have Barney remain as the chair. And I don't know, I'm just making some assumptions here, Lorraine. So, yes. if you're not okay oh, with this, you're assuming I'm, correctly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that I would remain as vice chair and that Lorraine would move into the secretary position. Uh, clerk's position. Okay. Clerk, sorry, clerk. clerk. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. So, we've got uh, about five more minutes before we can begin. Four minutes. We don't have anything other administrative wise, do we, Dinah? Mm, no, I got nothing. You got anything? I've got nothing. Okay. Um, Frank did mention he's working on two applications, which he may have for September. Uh, they're both garage applications. One would require a special permit. The other would require a variance. Um, the one that would require a special permit is, remember, we had approved property on Cocasset Street to allow, we had, we had granted a variance previously to allow them to access the um, premises on a road that's not, on which it does not have frontage. Okay. I don't recall, but okay. I will look it up. But I don't recall which number it was, but that, that would, they, they want to put up a garage, a okay. uh, detached garage. Okay. And the other one I believe he said is on Sherwood Street. And that would require a variance. So that may be in, or those, one or both of them may be in in September. Um, okay. The way things stand now, Frank says it's probably 50-50 as far as September or October. And of course in September we have the continuance of um, East Belcher. And on that, Scott, you're <coughs> going out there on the 28th? On the 28th, um, Board of Health Director and myself will be visiting uh, the premise. Um, and we should give we should be able to give the board an update on that. Okay. Hopefully. So we'll still be busy. And our September date is twenty first. Twenty first. Okay. Yes. Okay. Dana, nothing else is kicking around or? I haven't. Um, well, somebody came in for an accessory apartment, but that's planning board, so I don't think I have anything for zoning lately. You said anything about that? No. Not yet. <laughs> okay. You looking through your pile of stuff trying to send me some? <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't know. I mean, there might stuff be coming to you. <laughs> That clock's not right. I got 709. Both of you are here for the, so you, you can come on up to the table. It'll be a lot easier. And I'll read the hearing notice in about a minute and a half. Yes, I do think. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Time being 7, 10 p.m., James Kingston requests a special permit pursuant to the code of the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, Chapter 275 Zoning, Section 3.1.6, Table 3-1, Use Group F1, to allow the construction of a single dwelling unit on a non-conforming lot to be used as a five-bedroom independent living home for physically impaired residents as well as any other special permits, variances, or findings as may be required with respect to the foregoing. Subject property is located at 187 Main Street in the R40 Residential and Agricultural District and is not located in any restrictive overlay district. So you want to introduce yourselves? All right. Uh, good evening. My name is Robin Parker, and I am the architect uh, with Intent Architects. My name is James Kingston. I'm the owner of the lot, or the future owner of the lot, and uh, the builder of the project. Okay. Is there anybody from the Cerebral Palsy Association who? No, um, and, and we actually want to discuss that a little bit. I'm sorry? Um, we would like just to actually focus on the fact that this is a house for people who are in wheelchairs. Um, because these various nonprofit organizations have a little bit of hesitancy about putting their name forth in public meetings because this population is a little bit vulnerable. So okay. we would like to talk about the fact that what this is, is a, it simply is a single family sorry, home. Sorry, I'm sorry, would yeah. you mind? Oh, yeah, sorry. I just want to make oh. sure everyone can hear. Yeah, so you would right. the microphone. Into the microphone. Okay. I, know we well, I figure there's only three people here, but yeah, okay. So we. Um, that's why we had some initial conversations with the town and we did reach out because we do want to build this as, you know, physically it looks like a five bedroom home, but we understand because the people that are living there are in wheelchairs, okay, that they do require a level of care. And so when we looked in the zoning code for Foxborough, we couldn't exactly find a use you know, that, that described what this house is. And that's where we had, um, James had conversations with you, I had conversations with the planning board. And um, this is not the first house we've done. In other towns, you know, we were able to find something that matches what our use is. This time we were not able to find anything. And so um, we, want to discuss a little bit that as an institutional use, because we understand that's how Foxborough sees it. And so we just want to make some clarifications for the abutters about who will be living here, because we understand there are some concerns and we would like to address those. Okay, I'm, we'll obviously proceed, yeah. but yeah. there were a number of questions that, mm -hmm. that I have yeah. that would relate to the programs that okay. I would think somebody from the association would be, you know, appropriate to answer. Now, hopefully, you know, you, I think, you can. I think um, James um, okay. has been in conversation with so, them about this project. We'll, we'll, yep. And so we'll ask our we questions. Yep. And uh -huh. obviously, if we if we don't feel we have all the answers we need, we may need to continue the matter. We and understand. at that point, we may very well need to have somebody from the association to uh, to respond to those questions. Okay. But. Uh I, I hope let's, I'll be let's, able to, and James will be able to address. Okay, your, let's, let's proceed. Why don't you tell us? Okay. okay, again, you're the architect. I'm the architect. Mr. Kingston is the contractor. He's, he's also the owner of the property, and he'll also. You own it currently? Will be, will be the owner of the property. I'm right. sorry. He's the applicant for the, as we go through this process, but you know, as more time goes by, he will be the owner, and he'll be the continued owner of the property. So. Yeah. Who would what be ultimately leasing it to the correct? Okay. And lease to a nonprofit organization that cares for people with dis disabilities. Okay. Can we have the name of that? I'm not at liberty to say. That's why it, what, what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um. Yeah. We, um, we, we know, or at least we think we know, mm -hmm. yeah. that it's um, United Cerebral Palsy Association of Metro, West, of Metro Boston. Yes. Is that correct? We're not at liberty to say. <sighs> I'm sorry, yeah, he's correct. I apologize, but um, their concern over having a public meeting is 
that we're broadcasting that there's people with, that are very vulnerable living in this house. Like physically vulnerable, physically only vulnerable. because they, have a, they are in wheelchairs. That's a physical, it's a, only a physical mobility issue. Except we, as the board that ultimately has to make a decision, and obviously, you know, neighbors who own property in the vicinity of this mm -hmm. particular location really have a right to know exactly what and who and why and how is being done there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, I'll let you proceed, but at this point, I, I question whether we're going to have all our answers answered. So. Okay. I'll okay. Ask, I guess, hey, um, what are your questions? What are your concerns? So, why don't you first tell us about the, what, what you're planning to do on the property itself. The property right now is vacant. Yes, we understand, I understand that there was a house there that was um, uh, removed within the past two years. Um, I don't know the exact date of that. Um, and so what we wish to do is to put um, a five bedroom house on the property. Mm -hmm. okay. it does have a patio, some outdoor space. As you can see from the drawings we submitted, as you drive by, it's going to look very similar to the Cape style that is along that area. It's a very modest house. Um, it's not overly large at all. It's 20, 2,600 square feet. I don't, can't exactly remember. Um, I, we changed the elevation so it does look more cape from as you approach it. It's a single story house. Um, it will have a driveway. We're going to try to keep the existing driveway that's there now with the curb cut. And then it will go back to a parking area that's in the back of the property. Um, what else can I say? It's, you know, the design of the house as such, if you were to go inside, you can see that it is um, the very wide corridors for people in wheelchairs, the, the doors, there's a lot of sliding doors, the bathroom and the kitchen design is for accessibility, the living room space is large enough for, you know, multiple people in wheelchairs to be able to, um, you know, have your wheelchair there and also, you know, get into the furniture and the, the eating space. Um, we do have a paved walkway that goes all the way around for people to have, you know, be able to go outside and have some enjoyment of the outside. We do have a paved patio area that will probably have furniture similar to the furniture, you know, people in the neighborhood have in their out. I would say as you drive by visually, it's just going to look like a new house. Yeah, a new small Cape house. Huh? So, and I'm not sure that anybody who's watching and, and other people in the public have, have seen the plans themselves, but you have five bedrooms. Yes. Um, living room, den, mm -hmm. kitchen and dining room. Yep. Uh, and two bathrooms. Two bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, I've done a calculation which may not be accurate, mm -hmm. but the calculation I did is that your habitable floor area on the first floor is about 1,732 square feet. Is what? 1,732, because... Okay. all right. I thought you said something else, like okay. 7,000. No, 1,732. No. <laughs> uh-huh, yep. Um, you're going to be building this on a slab. Uh, we will have a basement, a partial basement, a okay. partial full basement, and then crawl spaces. And that partial yep. full basement is going to be finished? Uh, it will be... Um, Finished, yeah. Well, so the, uh, the, they use it mo mainly for storage because yeah. the occupants are not able, and also it's where the mechanical room is located. Okay. It's going to be room. an unconditioned space, so oh, it's okay. just for mechanical storage. Yeah, storage. It's a full basement. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, tell us what you can about the individuals who, be, who are going to be residing there. Uh, they vary in age, um, from what I can see from other houses that I have visited. Um, they vary in age. They are in a wheelchair. Um, most, um, most of them are, you know, there's painting, there's activities, there's creativity. These, they may need some assistance for, um, you know, to use the bathroom, okay, and maybe to get in and out of furniture, okay. But the rest of the time, they're just physically disabled people who are living in a wheelchair. Um, and they're also part of um, 
uh, day programs where they will travel during the day like a, like a school setting um, and then mm -hmm. return to the home mm -hmm. in the evening. Yeah. The, the intent is to give people a chance to live independently. Mm -hmm. So they're all, all adults? They are adults. Oh yeah, I should have said, yeah, they okay. are adults, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and talk about the day programs. They're um, very similar to a school where there's different activities going on every day, uh, whether it's painting. Uh, 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 I've there's seen also tools uh, painting, to teach them how to, yeah. to cook. There's mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a um, life skill training. Yeah. There's a there's I believe they have programs where there's a the, the adults are taught life skills to be able to live independently. Um, I have visited the uh, day program that is located and was located in Watertown. I think they moved to something larger. And they had uh, music lessons. They do have art lessons, craft lessons, these skill lessons. Okay. There's uh, reading time. It's also, it's social time. I'm looking forward to a daycare program when I'm older. <laughs> it's, you know, I would have to say it's probably something equivalent that to, um, you know, visiting your local se senior center, which... It's quite nice, actually, now. <laughs> I have to say the one down in Falmouth is gorgeous. Um, it's a... So the not-for-profit doesn't provide those types of services on the premises? Oh uh, No, no, this is a home. A home. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like probably when you do crafts when you go home, you might do a puzzle when you go home. But this is a home. This is where people live. The day program is for, you know, the training, education, mm -hmm. socialization. And... Is this licensed in any way, this home? That I can't do. I'm no. not sure. We've done these and uh, we've built these homes in a few towns and they've always been built as a residential tree um, where we, this is our first time having to go in front of a board mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, because they, they, are, they are homes first. Um, it's so a home for independent living. Uh, so, so there's no, um, when, when you mentioned life skill training, no. does that go on within the home itself? No, or that, just that, outside? That's, that's, that's in the day program. And, and where, would, where yeah. is that typically performed? There's different day programs throughout the state. They'll normally go to the one that's reasonably close. Okay, so, and hmm. certain individuals may go to one and certain individuals may go to another? Um, most likely they'll all go to the same mm -hmm. yeah. location. Okay. So does the not-for-profit have employees on the premises? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. 24 hours a day? Yes, there is someone um, there. There's someone overnight who there's no bedroom for that person, but that person is there, uh, you know, available uh, night person. How many typically would be on the premises at any one time? Any idea? Ooh, during the day, um, I've, I've seen, if you, if you count the five people that live there, pr probably an additional three people live there? Three, yeah. Three? Or I shouldn't say live there. There's you additional could have three. anywhere from three to five. Yeah. Say at any. Depending upon the level of um, physical disability the person may have. That person may have one person with them all day. Okay? And it, it may be someone who doesn't require someone with them all day. That's why it's so three to 10, uh, so three to five. So that would be eight to 10 people would be there during the day. And then at night it would be six, maybe, maybe one other person if there's someone there that does require you know, additional assistance. But you indicated that the um, ind individuals who would be residing here would be going to day programs. Is, is that five days a week, seven days a week, less, F more? Five days a week. Five days, five days a week. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, if, that's for the most cases that I've seen. Uh -huh. that, that I've seen. Mm -hmm. So, so if, if, if all five are going to a day program that's outside of the, mm -hmm. of the home itself, mm -hmm. um, are there employees within the home while they're um, outside? No, that might be, uh, I would imagine one person would stay, maybe one or maybe yeah, none. The, it's kind of like if the, I- the people washing, like there'd be someone there to clean. wash bed sheets. Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, prepare a meal. Prepare a meal. Maybe mm -hmm. one person would be there during the day, mm -hmm. or maybe it would be like, uh, like we leave our homes during the day and. Uh, no, there's, I know. Al there's always there's be always someone one? in the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what about on the weekend? So there's no programs they will be going to on the weekend. Do you try to? Are there any hey, programs? A, a lot of times, family visit at the yeah. weekend. So okay. the, if if it's someone mm -hmm. who's recently become independent, their parents could come and visit them. Mm -hmm. Um, or sometimes it's someone's mm -hmm. kids that could come to visit them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's what I've seen. Yeah. Is the Department of Public Health involved in this scenario in any way with oversight of uh, the services that are being say. provided? Department of Developmental Services. Department of Development yeah. Yeah. Services. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they have... Mm -hmm. um, I mean, your, your question about licensure, um, so Department of Developmental Services licenses residential and daycare service programs. Um, and that includes programs that provide care but not, you know, medical or therapeutic treatment. And programs cannot, as far as I could see, just in looking at the uh, relevant statutes, programs cannot be... Um, be run without licensure from DDS. Okay. So I would suspect this would have to be licensed. But again, that would not be, be you. We would be the Enough unnamed problem. entity that would be running the program. Correct. So you did mention they have pro programs in other communities that you've um, built the homes? Correct. Mm -hmm. And are those programs comparable to this? Uh, the residential homes we've yeah. built for them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Nearly identical. So let me ask a, um, an open question that a lawyer shouldn't ask, but I'm not acting as a lawyer here. Um, would you characterize this as a residential program or an educational program? Residential. Purely residential? Yeah. yeah. It is to give um, these highly disabled people the, the chance to live independently mm -hmm. and to give them all the tools that they can live independently. This is the only type of supportive program that this not-for-profit manages? Yeah, yes. as far as I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. The day program and, the, and then the, the houses. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't really manage the house, but they, it's part of their mission. Mm -hmm. the, to have people live as independently as possible. Kim, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. So the caregivers do not live there? They don't live no. there, no. And and so for the, the funding for the proposed building, so it will, once it's built, it will be leased by the not-for-profit. Right. And the funding for the building itself before the lease happens? It comes from me personally. Okay. Okay. So in other words, you're, you're building this for yourself. You're not building it for this entity. I've worked with them for a long time, and we have a great relationship. Mm -hmm. And I build these properties. What we do is we work in a lot of... Um, whether it's commercial or residential homes that need to be handicap accessible. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I build it and lease it long term. But this nonprofit entity is not uh, paying you to construct the home. They, they only will be paying you the 
monthly, right. annual, whatever it is, you know, rental. Mm -hmm. How long is the lease? Um, 12 years uh, with an option for an extra 10. Okay. And I, this may not be the moment for this question, but I, I am curious. Is does this approve if we were to approve this? Does so if there's a possible approval here, would this run with this particular applicant? Does it run with the parcel of land? How would that go? This may not we may not even be there yet. This may not be the night for that question. Yeah. Um, I think we can impose a condition to specify that it would only run with the entity that's providing the program. Okay. I think we can do that. Okay. Yeah, it's not for this moment, but I want to yeah. make sure we, if we get there. Um, in the, um, the cover page on here, yep. okay, there, there, there's what I think is a contradiction. Okay. Um, the dwelling will house a total of five wheelchair-bound residents mm -hmm. who receive custodial care in a non-institutional environment. And a little bit later on, it says the proposed new single-family dwellings located in, in a R40 single-family dwelling district the proposed occupants use wheelchairs and require non-custodial care. Oh, that, yeah, sorry. So it's what, quite bad. It, they, they, they have custodial care. That's my bad. They have custodial care. Yeah, I probably start talk typing. And, okay, and what do you... That's your, no, what they, do you, they do require assistance, which is custodial care, according to the... Okay. Yeah. When you require assistance for bathing and mm -hmm. moving, that is considered custodial care. Uh -huh. That's my bad typing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think in every application we, we do put out that the people are in wheelchairs and they need assistance. They, yeah, so. So the the, the unnamed entity with whom you will be contracting. Um, Are all the in individuals that they service in wheelchairs? Yes. Is that because of physical impairment or physical and mental, yes. both? Uh, physical. 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 No, it's time. Kim, anything else? Is there any way that we could potentially request some sort of a letter that would be available only for the board to read from the not-for-profit? Is there any way that we can, without violating the open meeting law? No. no. It would be public. No, we'd have to make it public. I know what because, you're getting at. Because I certainly yeah. understand that there's a request for privacy. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But we also have a, a duty to perform as well. I'm just wondering if there's a way we can meet somewhere in the middle. No, it would have to be um, public. Okay. And we'd have to read into the record. So. Okay. Um, I mean, when you talk about transparency, it's not just us knowing Right. But it's the public knowing right. you know, who their neighbors are going to be if, right. if we approve right. it. No, I, I understand. Um, I hope we were able to answer all the questions on their behalf. I think we'll uh, maybe. Questions maybe. Yeah. Scott, any huh? questions? Not at this moment. Okay. All right, I'm going to let... Um, Dan, has anybody raised their hand? Yeah, okay. I'm so I'm going to take oh. commentary from the public. You, you're going to have to come up, number one, to the podium. Um, Mm -hmm. And number two, you would have to identify yourself by name and address. My name is Mary De Pasquale, and I live at 191 Main Street. I am the direct abutter to this property, okay? <clears throat> Originally, 
when the home was sold, the person that bought it had come to us and said that they were planning to build a single family home for himself. <clears throat> Obviously, something's happened. We were notified in um, 2021 asking, telling us that they were going to, he was going to tear down the building, which was understandable, all right? Now, <clears throat> I get this letter that says, could you explain to me single dwelling on a non-conforming lot? What does that mean? Okay, the, one. the, the lot is non-conforming for, for two reasons. Um, but let, let me just step back a second. The, yep. the, the town's zoning bylaw has specifications relative to dimensional requirements for right. property. Right. And it differs depending on the zone the property is in. In the R40 zone, a lot should be 40,000 square feet. Right. That's what the bylaw requires. This lot is 32,730 right. square feet. So it's non-conforming in that respect. Right. Also in the R40 district, a property has to have 200 feet of frontage. Um, and this has 187.4. So the frontage being on, on Main Street. Right. So it's non-conforming for those two reasons. Okay. Depending on where a house would be situated on the lot, it may also um, violate the front side or rear yard setbacks. Mm -hmm. The certified plot plan that they provided to us shows that it, it would not violate those setbacks. But again, it's a non-conforming lot because of the, um, the smaller size. Right. Because of the fact that the front that doesn't meet the um, applicable requirement. Okay. Well, my concern is this, where it's not, and I have a lot of respect for cerebral palsy individuals. I have someone in my family, so I'm fully aware. And it's, you know, there is a need. But my concern is they're not the ones that are building this. They're not the ones that are going to own this. It's actually being owned by someone that they're going to be paying money to, and he's leasing. And at any time, the lease could be broken. Now you've got a home that has five units, five rooms in it, and you could lease it out to, I'm sorry, individuals that may not be suited for our neighborhood. And that's a real concern, yeah. okay? You're sitting here telling me it was my understanding when I had come up to the board to, you know, the office to look at the stuff, that it was in fact the Cerebral Foundation LLC that was purchasing the land and that he was going to be the one building. The land hasn't been perked yet. You don't even know, and I, <clears throat> the schematic that I looked, the layout, where the um, septic system is going to be is going to be right beside our property lines. Now that land slopes down into my property, and that's a concern for me. You've got five people that are going to be using a facility all day, even whether they come and go, whether they go to these places, and I understand that, but this is a real concern I have with someone owning it and leasing it out, and then it's fine, you give them a 12-year lease, but that means nothing if they decide they want to pull out. Now you've got a property, so who do you lease it to? And we know, and I, I'm, I'm not going to express what my concerns are here, just like you can't say who it is that's going to move in. There's too many unanswered questions here. Exactly what this land, and this property could turn into five years from now, 12 years from now. I just, with all the land that we have available in Foxborough, and like I said, my understanding was it was going to be one family building on that property, and just like everything else, he decided to sell it. So you have to think outside the box that he could turn around. Tomorrow, you, he could get approval for this, and then the Cerebral Foundation says, oh, wait a minute, we don't want it, but he's got permission to build this place now, so who is he gonna have living there? I, I just don't think it's appropriate. 
and I would be hard pressed to give my approval for it. I'm sorry. There's too many unanswered mm -hmm. questions here. And it's and it's a large like you said, it's non now that you've explained non conforming to me, it's it's not appropriate for that space. And you're gonna have a lot of people coming and going all hours of the day and night. Uh, I don't I just think it can be better utilized as a single family home, which was what it was all these years. I guess I have my concerns, I'm sorry. Okay? Okay, thank you. This only has changed. If, what would happen if they, the lease were broken? Well, that's what I said. Well, then they could, <clears throat> you've got five bedrooms there. You really don't have a home for someone to live in, mm -hmm. a family to live in. Barney, someone yep. on Zoom has, wants to talk. Mm -hmm. Did I? Someone else is raising their hand. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it needs to be really researched more. Okay. I really do. All right, thank you. Um, wh whoever is zooming in, if you could. Hello. Let, let us see you. Can you all, can you all hear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you tell us who you are? and. Hi. Um, my name's Brian Kane. Uh, my wife, Vicki Kane, we live at 185A Main Street, which is let, just let behind me, the property in question. Can I stop, can I stop you for a second? So you, you did send an um, email in, which we have. Are you going to read that, or you want me to read that? Oh, uh, well, I'll let you read you're it. You're free I'll, to I'll read it. Voice. I just wanted to um, agree with, I think her name was Mary. I have a very similar concern. You'll see my uh, concern number three in my email. Um, she put it very eloquently. Uh, my wife and I are here shaking our heads in agreement. Um, have no issues with um, the physically impaired. I'm just, we're concerned about the longevity of the property and what, what the future holds in terms of potential occupants later down the line. Um, you know, as institutional defined uh, on your website, this could bring um, a multitude of different types of individuals with different impairments uh, that could be potentially concerning for us as a resident uh, that lives just behind the facility in question. So um, if you would like to read the rest of it, I, I don't, you know, you're free to do that. Um, so so let, not let, sure. let, let me do that. Let me read that this into the record. So sure. you, you sent an email um, today um, to Paige Duncan, Gabby Jordan, and Diana Gray. And it says, um, we're not sure that, that it is required or necessary to email you, but we felt compelled to put in writing our concerns prior to tonight's public hearing so that they can be addressed, considered during the call. Our concerns re regarding James Kingston's request are below. One, <clears throat> although the property in question is located on a main road, Route 140, it is residentially zoned, and we feel that this location for housing of institutional use is not appropriate. We're sure there are other properties in Foxborough where it would be more appropriate to have such an institution. Two, there is another property across the street that is currently for sale as well, 186 Main Street. We are concerned that if the request regarding the property located at 187 Main Street is approved for institutional use, then the door will be open for additional institutional housing at 186 Main Street. For our concern, number one, we feel that this is a residential area that is not intended or ideal for institutional housing. Three, if Mr. Kingston's special permit request to build institutional housing is approved, we are also concerned about its future occupants. As per the Town of Foxborough, Massachusetts Usual Regulations website, zoning section 3.1.6, table 3-1, group, use group F1, Institutional use is defined as followed. All land in buildings for housing people, it should be all land and or buildings, for housing people suffering from physical limitations, including among others, hospitals, sanitariums, infirmaries, orphanages, and institutions licensed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We understand that Mr. Kingston is seeking to construct a single dwelling unit on a non-conforming lot to be used as a five-bedroom independent living home for physically impaired residents. 
Aside from our other concerns noted above, we do not object to this particular physical impairment. However, we are particularly concerned that if, when the intended occupants are relocated for whatever reason, or become deceased or the property is eventually sold, the said institution for the physically impaired potentially could easily become an institution for other concerning in impairments like drug rehabilitation or for the mentally ill, for example. Thank you for your consideration. We look forward to tonight's Zoom meeting. Sincerely, Brian and Vicki Kane. Anything you want to add? Uh, no, that, that, I think that pretty much sums up our, our concerns. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And is that somebody else or is that? No, that's him turning that's him? his okay. camera off. Um, anything that either of you would like to add? Um, well, I'm not a zoning lawyer or anything like that, but I, I just, I, to address his concern about that a physical li um, limitation, which institution, your zoning definition includes, I, I actually don't see how we could take, anyone would take that as a drug use or a mental uh, institutional housing. That is in a very different category. Um, I would never consider that physical limitation. Like that, I'm that's, sorry, I, yeah, I, I, that, that, but I do state I'm not a zoning person. I just read a lot of zoning code as I, you know, look at buildings. Yeah, my, I'm not a zoning person either, but I, I, my point was that if the property was sold at a later date, other occupants with other impairments or disabilities, whether they met mental or drug abuse, the property could easily turn into something other than wasn't originally intended. So right, wait, wait, I'm wait. not comparing. Excuse me, wait, we're not having a debate back and forth. No, yeah, this. no. So that, that, that was just my, my surprise because it, I does, know, but it does state about physical limitations here. and Foxborough seems very on top of zoning definitions and, mm -hmm. you know, and sort of in, enforcing those. So, but I guess I, I don't. Anything else, Kim? Uh, uh, Mr. Kingston, how many of these houses do you own and lease with this nonprofit? Four. Okay, and so this. We, if, we work on um, other properties that they own also. Okay, so if this were to be approved, this would be number five? Correct. Okay, and is the 12 year lease typical? Yes. Okay. So four current. And you said you work on other properties as well. What does that mean? But the, for the same nonprofit, we okay. do uh, work on all their properties. They they have they own, um, you know, maybe three other group homes. We help out there, and day programs. We work for other nonprofits also, where we do renovations to their spaces, whether it's day programs new kitchens, uh, handicap accessible kitchens, mm -hmm. renovating handicap accessible bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you currently own four, uh, but you also work with them on other locations with renovations, yes. et cetera, okay. So, <clears throat> Does this not-for-profit own other sites that are licensed by the Commonwealth? Yes. For other institutional-like services, different from this type of service that no. you're describing? Not institutional, educational, Only this daycare. Type. Yeah. Just the daycare programs daycare and the, programs. the residential independent living homes. Mm -hmm. and I but there's no I, other disabilities yeah. or types that they look mm -hmm. after. Yeah. I know the so, word institutional is very, um, it's a hard word and it does sort of conjure up a, a variety of scenarios for, you know, the, for people. Um, that's why I was, we were surprised a little bit that we were considered an institutional use, but we understand that by the definition, this, you know, single family house does appear to fit in that. but. Um, I would say that this organization does not think of themselves as institutional. They are, you know, they are providing these services. They are 
providing uh, you know these programs for people, you know, daycare. I know I, I'm trying to work with the Department of Mental Health to also address um, people who, who are living in you know independent living homes for not mental health issues but um, developmental health um, issues so that they can lead an independent life and um, they also try, we try to shy away with, from the word institutional it, it is hard. I mean this is you know to, to my definition and this is probably not a an appropriate definition either, but it's a, it's a group home. Yeah, yeah. Um, but our, our bylaw does not use that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Technology I, just uh -huh. uses institutional. So that's why we reached out to a variety of departments to find out where we would be in Foxborough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can I? I just I'm just trying to understand the context in which you're coming to us. Mm -hmm. So. So there's a couple different things that you're talking about with respect to residential use. One is the model that you're that is in the application, you currently own, Mr. Kingston, four properties. If this is approved, it would be number five. The other thing that happens here is that the nonprofit itself also owns properties that are used for residential use? Yes. As well. Okay, so those are, the, at this point, you're telling us that within this context, there's two different options if someone were to say, have a, someone in their family who was looking for independent living. It Sorry? could be if if someone would had someone from with this. Mm -hmm. We're trying not to with a wheelchair disability. Say, with yeah. a wheelchair disability, thank you. Um, then they might be looking for independent living. And what you're presenting to us here is that the bigger context is could be something like the four that you already own, or some residences that are owned by the not for profit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's, just trying to understand the context yeah. here a little bit more. It's also an issue of funding. It's yes, yep. yes, I'm sure. And James has kind of stepped in in that gap to build these houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all the questions I have. According to the um, Secretary of State's records, you have a lot of different business entities. Yes. So which one would be the actual owner of this property? It's called Seskin Homes. Can you spell that, please? S-E-S-K-I-N. That would be the? LLC. LLC. And what, what is the business purpose of Seskin Homes? It is to build uh, handicap accessible homes. And to own some of them? Yes. Um, I think really I'm just focusing on our definition of institution, mm -hmm. institutional and in regards to how it references and institutions licensed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which many things fall into that category. Mm -hmm. So that, I guess that's an area that I would have concerns about applying this in a residential area. Mm -hmm. well, why don't we do this? Not because of this particular scenario, but because of what this designation in our zoning. What, what, why don't we do this? Unless we have other questions, um, we can close the public portion and talk about it. So. So moved. Well, not yet. You, oh. No questions? No. No further questions? No. Scott, anything? Um, my question is, do you maintain this property? Yes. You maintain, you, you do the landscape and maintain the landscape and, yep. and any, what? Okay, you want to close the public portion? I move we close the public portion of the application. Second. Okay, all in favor? You started, so weren't you? So 
you know, in the definition that we have, um, I see how this request falls into this category. Mm -hmm. But my concern is many of the other aspects <coughs> that are described here that fall into that same category. Mm -hmm. And if allowing that usage for this particular request opens up opportunity for all of these other categories to occur on that property were there to be a sale or a um, you know a termination of the lease that's my concern so yeah you know, I think it's unfortunate that we, we, we don't have a um, category of group homes yeah because that's really what this is mm -hmm. yeah. um, but the way F1 reads, all land and buildings for housing people suffered from physical limitations. And then it includes things like sanitariums and hospitals, et cetera. Um, and institutions it's licensed by the Commonwealth. An institution I mean, licensed yeah. by the Commonwealth could be a group home. Right. Uh, could be something like the Rentham Developmental Center. Yeah. So I, I think the- Could be a methadone treatment program. Yeah. Be, you know. But I, number one, I think the definition is broad enough or, or the category, the use group, is broad enough to include something of this nature. Yes. And number two, I, I think we could impose conditions, if we were to approve this, that would restrict the use to our satisfaction. Okay. To what we've been hearing, this quote-unquote nonprofit entity that doesn't want to yep. be identified um, you know, it's program, it's specific program. I, I think we that's could do that if we wanted to approve that's it. That's really where I was going is, yeah. can we do that type of limit? I, I, okay. I think we can. Uh, draft the potential conditions that would, you know, reflect that. Okay. The thing that bothers me is that the entity that's running the program is not here to answer all the questions. Um, <laughs> we think we know who it is because Diana had that information, and, and I've gone on their website to understand the various programs they run. Mm -hmm. Now, one of them is a residential program, mm -hmm. and we've been told that this would be pure residential, but there are other questions I think that we probably, mm -hmm. I know that I have, and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you know, two mm -hmm. of you do as well. Um, wh wh one of the reasons that and, and this goes back to a discussion that we've had, that I've had with Scott, and on email with, with Paige. Um, one of the reasons I was asking questions relative to you know, programs and educational programs was to determine whether this, whether the principal purpose of, of what was being done here was educational. Because if it is, it would be exempt under the Dover Amendment or could be exempt, we could make a determination mm -hmm. that, it's, that it's an educational use and is therefore exempt from mm -hmm. the Dover Amendment. Um, they've told us point blank that it's a residential use, so I have to go, go along with that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of unanswered questions. And you know, certainly if we were to say, yeah, we're gonna approve it, um, I can't frame my, all of my potential conditions without knowing who specifically is going to be administering the programs and what the programs are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not a at all opposed to a use of this nature, but I'm not ready to say yes because I don't have all the information I want. I totally agree. Um, I do see that it does, I think it fits in F1, however uneasily it fits in there, mm -hmm. let's say. Um, I do still have some questions. If we could move forward with this, potentially we're talking about another meeting. I don't know if that's where we'll end up, but it could be another meeting to try to have some of the questions answered. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we need somebody from the, the entity, from the business, from not the business, from the nonprofit to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Right. right. And without that, I don't know how we can make a decision. Right. Right. Um, if we were to be able to have another meeting with mm -hmm. a representative, let's say, I do think something I would like us to talk about is that 
that we could have a condition that any potential approval that we had would, you know, let's say run with the applicant, mm -hmm. not with the parcel of land, mm -hmm. not with the building. Yeah. And what that means is for anyone that's listening or for the neighbors that are here, that we wouldn't just say, well, from now on, if, if we approved, it's, it's a big F still, mm -hmm. from now on, we approved it, this building is now for this sort of a use. What that would mean is we would condition it so that they would come back to see us. Let's just say that Mr. Kingston were to sell it in five years. The new owner would then come back to us and we would go through this process again with them. So if we were to be able to have a representative come in and talk mm -hmm. to us so that we could possibly get to a point if we could approve it. So this is not a done deal whatsoever, but that would be something that we would likely put in there as a condition so that they would need to come back. I mean, Kim and I have been working long enough that we know how each other thinks. Um, you know, we, we can't talk to each other outside the no. context of, of a public hearing. But, but I did draft a number oh. of conditions earlier today that if we approved it tonight, okay. Um, and one of them was that the permit would be specific to this nonprofit organization mm -hmm. and they couldn't assign it, transfer it, or convey it in any manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it would end when they were no longer running the program there. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and other conditions that would yes. be consistent with this. If I may, even if Mr. Kingston was to sell the property, special permits are non transferable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. A new, end, a new owner would have to come in mm -hmm. and specifically ask for the same request because mm -hmm. special permits are non-transfer. They go with the entity. Mm -hmm. They do yeah. not go with the property. And, Parents and the go with the property. You know, the unfortunate thing is, you know, to my mind, the permit is really going to the nonprofit because they're running the program, mm -hmm. notwithstanding the fact that you own it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the good thing about you owning it is that there'll be tax dollars to the town. Mm -hmm. Because if a nonprofit owned the property, then it, it would not be taxed. But um, to my mind, the program is being run by the nonprofit and not yes. by you. Yeah. And that's, and that's where the special, that's where this special permit goes. I think there's another special permit that, that we would have to grant because the, as, as I see it, the, um, habitable floor area for this mm -hmm. building is mm -hmm. more than 25% of the habitable floor area for the prior building, the one that was demolished. Oh, oh. So we would have to issue a... Yeah, I'm sorry, where is that exactly? The I, I tried 5, to... Section 5.4.2. 5. So the square footage you had mentioned earlier, two. was that just for the addition or was that the entire... You had mentioned that the square footage of the single family home was 1,700 and... See, I, I, I did a calculation, which may not be correct. And yeah, I think it's it's more. It's you think it's more? Seventeen hundred, roughly seventeen hundred, I think. Of now, I'm, I'm not talking gross. Okay, I'm I'm talking what's oh, habitable, which would livable. basically yeah. be the bedrooms, the bathrooms, yeah. the den, the living room, the kitchen. It's Initially, I was thinking in terms that the um, basement might fall to that category. Oh. It probably doesn't. No, thank even you. though it's finished, and the uh, laundry room would fall into that category. The basement won't be finished; it's only for holding mechanical. But the square footage is more than that. I think it's seventeen hundred square foot addition, plus that first floor of the. Uh, I think I wrote oh, no, on here. No well, don't, don't, worry total, yeah, don't, yeah. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It'll be yeah, total okay. twenty five hundred uh -huh. square yeah. foot. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It'll be a total of twenty five hundred square foot. That's gross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm no about. livable square footage. Yeah. Oh. No. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that later on. It, yeah. it, trust me, it isn't. And, and when we get to that, I'll, I'll read you the definition and explain uh, why. Yeah, I'll look at okay. it. Okay. All right. Okay. So what, what, what the assessor considers to be living space and what we consider from a zoning standpoint to be mm -hmm. habitable is, right. is I just different. didn't want to underestimate. Uh, yeah, oh, we're actually thinking it's bigger. But my, my, my point is I, <laughs> yeah. I, I think you need a, um, a special permit on the section 5.4.2. And I think, Scott, you agree with me? Yeah. Yes. You know, initially I thought, and I think on Tuesday I convinced Scott that you also needed one under 5.6, and then when I read that section yeah, again, no, I said, no, no. I, I better call Scott, Scott right away and tell him that. Catastrophe and demolition. Uh, yeah, that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But did, did you demolish the old house? No, I've, okay. I've had nothing to do. Some okay. guy bought it a couple of years ago, um, and whatever his intentions were, I don't know. He put it on the market, 
And so, so the house, the old house, was already demolished. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they have what two years from the time the permits issued to stay in the same footprint, same volume. Mm -hmm. Can we like turn and I think that that two years expired. Oh. No, I think it's, the, the permit was issued in September of 2021. Oh, was it 2021? Yeah. So we got to get this quick. So <laughs> you're getting close. <laughs> yeah, they are close. <laughs> we're we're going to be close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, by, by the time they get some for a zoning like amendment, that. you know, you guys going to amend the zoning now that you know these independent living homes sort of are falling through the cracks a little bit. But I worked yeah. with the nonprofit in, in um, putting an offer together. We work side by side, mm -hmm. putting an offer together and hopefully mm -hmm. getting it accepted. Mm -hmm. But going back, I, I really think we need to speak with somebody from the, uh, you know, have our questions mm -hmm. answered by the, the nonprofit to get a better sense. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I agree. And, and I know that Diana had made that request to have somebody here, whether it was on Zoom or in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think we need to continue it. I think uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, so, mm -hmm. motion. I move that we continue this application until the September meeting. Second. Are, are you, Ooh, you, you? <laughs> what happens if we don't make September twenty twenty three? The permit will have expired. Whatever you. You'll have to talk with Mr. Shippey. Well. Uh -huh. You're going for the special permit anyway. Yeah. All right. So you're, so you're just, looking oh, for the special permit for because you're you're. We'll no matter what, on. you're going we'll to have to go for that special permit under five point. 5.4 mm -hmm. so that that, that you're, mm -hmm. you're increasing the habitable yeah. space more than 25 mm -hmm. percent so obviously mm -hmm. you got to go for a special permit yeah. anyway okay so you're increasing the non-conformity of that mm -hmm. so second the motion second is, is september 21st accessible to you are you available then yeah okay we'll have, to, we'll and, have, and again, we'll have a discussion it, we'll it doesn't whoever from the mm -hmm. nonprofit is going to accompany you, he or she does not have to be with you. It'd be nice if, if he or she was. Mm -hmm. There's also the opportunity to do it on Zoom, but we definitely need that person mm -hmm. um, to get a better sense of, uh, of the program. Yeah. It doesn't mean we're going to approve it, but we definitely need to, to speak with he or she and have he or she answer whatever questions we have. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, we, I'm not worried about the uh, form. We're, we're okay. Uh, Mr. Kingston, actually, Diane, do you have the form? I'm going to ask you to just sign a form that will agree to the uh, continuance. Then what's today? What's the number? Um, you have it over there. 21. 23 dash. Want me to flip it over? On here. What do you want? I know that mine means 12, there, isn't it? Oh, uh, 12. So I, I'll have to confirm with the nonprofit if they want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. That's because I think they've had some bad experiences in public meetings. Well, I think you've seen that yeah. how, how tough it is. So. Okay, if you just sign that. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll see. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, I, I think we owe, well, we owe money for the advertising. Can I come back to the town hall tonight? You can come back. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, last okay. Thank you very much. Can we, can we ask a question? No. no. On this one? No. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
No, just well, just general information. Uh, well, let me put it this way. If, if, it, if it has to do with this, the answer is no, because we've already continued it. But if you have just some, okay. if you want to ask about what the weather's going to be tomorrow, you know, or something like that, we can answer it. Well, no, just general, okay? Someone comes before the appeal board, like they did. Can't hear her. And he's purchased. Uh, you need to go to the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, a general question. All right. A person buying some property and coming to a planning board or anybody else with a <clears throat> plan. In other words, the building, I had asked for a picture of it, but I could see it, but I couldn't have a copy, okay, of what's going in. But if they haven't perked it yet and done testing, how can anything even be approved if it may not be able to put in that septic system? Okay, so you're, you're, you're asking a hypothetical question. Yeah. So um, our responsibility is to determine whether something is or is not permitted under the zoning bylaw. Okay. If, if we say yes to an application, mm -hmm. let's just say somebody wants to um, you know, put an addition on, on his or yeah. her home. If, right. if we say yes, if we either grant the special permit that's requested or the variance that's requested, mm -hmm. they then have to go to the building commissioner. And oh, you're the building, a, okay. Get a building permit. Okay, so if, it, if that land or any land was not, did not perk, then it would be a mute issue. They can't build on it. Correct. Okay. All right, but why why wouldn't they do that first before? There's the million dollar question. <laughs> because it makes no sense to me why someone would propose a plan and not even know they can. I mean, there's a lot of ledge there. <laughs> Correct. Okay. But the, the, um, there are new systems that are been in place right now, like tight tanks and stuff like that, that may allow them to um, be able to utilize that land. Um, I'm not familiar with the Board of Health um, regulations yeah. on the septic systems, right. but it's just I know where the, it's the question going, is. So it, yeah, they should. Question. I mean, should they do their due diligence and get it perked prior? Probably. Yeah, I mean, you like putting the uh, cart before, before the horse. horse, and that doesn't make any sense. Um, in the same token that you were to approve it, okay, <clears throat> um, the uh, neighborhood has the right to get a lawyer and appeal it. Correct. Yes. And any decision that we make, there's a 20-day appeal period after the decision is filed. We have to grant. We have to prepare a written decision. Yeah. It's filed with the town clerk, and then there's a 20-day appeal period. Right. I'm surprised five bedrooms was only two bathrooms. That's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are we all set? Well, we're going to see if Eric is still with us. Oh. <laughs> still here. I stayed later than I could, so. <laughs> you're, you're still interested? Okay, I'll, I'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Very much. Thank you. Uh, motion. Do we have anything else? Nothing else? Motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor.